we change our voice when we talk to high status people. This is what a new study shows. Of course, we change our voice. We try to be, first of all, very calm, very confident, and uh, enunciate properly so that the other person doesn't guess what we're saying or try and strain his ears to, uh, to hear our low and silent voice. This is on the conversation by Victoria Mileva, postdoctoral fellow, Psychology University of Sterling, and Juan David Leon Gomez, associate professor at Boston University. They said, imagine going for a job interview and the employer sitting across from you is truly intimidating. He's big, bold, loud, and mean looking. And uh, what might this do this to your confidence, to your mannerisms, to your way of speaking? I remember when I was in New York, downtown New York, a huge skyscraper of a building is where I had to go for an interview with uh, one of the big 500 firms, one of the big firms having to do with um, accounting and auditing. It was unbelievable. I had two of them interviewing me. One left who was supposedly, you know, there are two. Usually one is very harsh and the other is very uh, likable. The likable guy left and left me with the harsh one. Unbelievable. And he said to me, he leaned back in his chair and said, so tell me, why do you want to be an auditor? remember that I just cringed and sank in the seat I don't even know what I told him kindly support my patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel the daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting you'll find the patreon account details in the description box below Anyway, going back to this, uh, he, um, he's big, bold, loud, mean looking. And what might this do to your confidence, to your mannerisms, and to your way of speaking? You probably forget what to say. Anyway, our latest study has found that men and women generally speak with higher pitched voices to interviewers they think are high in social status. However, we found that people who thought they themselves were quite dominant were less likely to vary their pitch and generally spoke in a lower pitch when talking to someone of high social status. On the other hand, people who consider themselves to be prestigious talked in a measured way, not increased or decreased in volume of their voice very much. Dominance and prestige are two ways to acquire high social status. Dominance means taking power by force and coercion, imagine a bully while prestige is being freely given power due to one's skills and merits, imagine your favorite teacher. Men and women might speak with higher pitched voices towards high status people because a low pitched voice sounds dominant, particularly men, while a high pitched voice sounds relatively submissive. Using a high pitched voice would signal to an employer that the interviewee is not a threat and may serve to avoid confrontations. The differences we found with participants' self-perceived social status, that is, high dominance equals lower pitch and high prestige equals constant volume, implies that there is a relationship between self-perception of social status and behavior towards others. The more dominant you feel, the less you need to worry about other people's dominance. So you talk how you want. At the same time, the more prestigious you feel, the more calm and relaxed you may be, which may be why people started looking you up in the first place. Our fake interview experiment. In our study, we asked 48 participants to sit at a computer with a headset and web camera pointed towards them. In order to test a new form of online interviewing procedure, this was a ruse, but we wanted everyone to believe that the interviewers they saw on screen were real and would be listening and looking at the recordings later. Participants were presented with an image, name, and job title of an employer as well as an employee testimonial, which are all fictitious, of course. They were then asked to answer several questions. There were three employers in total, and their images were specially created using a program called EvoFit to look dominant or prestigious. 
Later, we got these images rated by different set of participants and picked the ones that were rated very high in dominance or prestige. We also picked one that was rated quite low on both of these traits, and this became our neutral employer. By pairing up the images with testimonials, names, and job titles, we were able to create employers who were high in dominance, prestige, or quite just quite average, neutral that is. When being interviewed by the dominant or high prestige employers, our participants' voice became higher pitched. When talking to the neutral employer, they did not change their way of speaking. We also looked at how different types of questions affect speech characteristics. That is, would people change the way they speak when told to introduce yourself compared to when asked how would you approach your boss to discuss a problem with a colleague? As you might imagine, the second question, which is much more interpersonal and also requires someone to discuss a conflict, caused more speech changes than the simple introduction question. Our findings show that we subtly manipulate our voices to suit particular social contexts we are faced with, such as talking to a scary employer. The most likely, we most likely do this without even thinking about it. These manipulations in turn affect the way we are perceived, just like body posture, the language we use, or our facial shape and expressions. Our voices are part of the arsenal of signals that affect perceptions of social status, of course. This is by uh, Rob Reddick, and it's uh, by Victoria Mileva and Juan David Leon Gomez, professors and postdoctoral fellow, and it's on uh, the conversation. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.